Hello friends, welcome to Study Strikers. Today we are going to see Homes of Animals. It is from EVS and it's for grade 4. So let's begin our chapter. We are going to learn here about different kind of animals, their shelters, what they uh, eat, uh, how they live. Okay, so let's begin. So where do animals live? Yes, there are animals all around us. So where do they live? Animals need shelter to protect themselves from heat, cold, rain and enemies just like us, isn't it? Uh, some of the animals are already protected by the nature but some of them need to protect themselves more. Their shelters are referred to as their homes. Different animals live in different kinds of homes depending on the availability of water, food and space. A place where an animal lives is called its habitat. So different animals are going to have different kind of habitats. So let's see them one by one. Animals can be grouped on the basis of their habitats so let's see how these animals are grouped into here we can see few animals uh, what's the common thing in these animals yeah most of them like all of them live on the land isn't it so let's see what do we call them animals that live on land are called as terrestrial animals some animals do not build homes but live in forests, grasslands, etc. These places are called natural shelters. So one doesn't need to build a forest for themselves or grasslands. Instead of that, uh, they choose such places. Land animals such as monkeys, squirrels, koala bears and lizards that live mostly on trees are called arboreal animals. Now this is the monkey which you can find easily around you. This is a squirrel. This is called as koala bear and this is lizard. So these animals which are mostly living on the trees are called as arboreal animals. Let's see the next part. Animals that live on land but how? Now one can see here is a huge bear. Does it look like a koala bear? No. Here is a lion and here is another kind of monkey which is a huge one. They have long forelimbs to help them swing from one branch to another and they have sharp claws with strong grip to help them climb up and down the tree or branches. So these kind of animals which kind of this kind of terrestrial animals or arboreal animals who live upon the tree they have what they have long four limbs their four limbs the front two limbs are helping them to swing from one branch to another branch they also have sharp claws with strong grip to help them climb up from up and down the tree or branches you must have seen a monkey swinging from branch to branch now lions and bears live in dens and caves so you can see here uh, this is a cave and this is a den rabbits mongoose and moles live in burrows isn't it now you can see a mongoose over here who's picking out of a burrow so these kind of animals, rabbits, mongoose, moles, they mostly live in burrows. Earthworms live in tiny holes. Have you seen earthworm? Earthworms are also called as farmer's friend. Why? They live inside the soil. They go deep in the soil, making the soil as airy and it can like you know hold more water more water can be penetrated into the soil and it improves the quality of the soil. Snakes live in big holes called pits. Ants live in anthill made of mud. 
Snails and tortoises have hard shells to protect themselves against danger. Now you can see here there is an ant hill. It is in the forest. Okay. So one uh, one can see so many ants around this ant hill and inside that ant hill also. Now you can see here a snail. Okay. And here is a tortoise. So what's on their back? There is their shell to protect themselves against the danger if any danger comes around they immediately hide themselves inside their shells this ant hill ant hill is mostly created by those ants only animals such as bats and owls that are active only at night are called as nocturnal animals they have better vision and hearing to enable them to hunt for their prey at the night so which are these animals bats and owls you can see here the bat and here is a owl some animals such as polar bear and woodchuck become inactive during the winter season when food is scarce the inactivity of animals during the winter months is commonly called as hibernation or winter sleep now you can see here the animal polar bear and woodchuck this is the animal woodchuck now they become inactive during the winter season where do they live they live mostly in very cold area like antarctic area where there is lots of snowfall so during the winter season what happens there is lots of snowfalls most of the green trees uh, are covered with the snow so these animals they mostly feed upon other animals so as there is scarcity of greenery and fruits the normal birds and animals are not available hence these animals go for the hibernation or it is also called as a winter sleep some animals such as snails frogs bees and earthworms settle down to a long sleep during hot summer months the rest and slowing down of activities during hot summer months is called estivation or summer sleep so just like winter there is scarcity of food in the summer also so there is a concept called as summer sleep so one can see a lot many frogs during the rainy season but where do these frogs grow go when it is a summer month they go for the summer sleep or estivation now one can see here bees so many bees they are they seem like they are dead but they are not dead actually they in a long sleep when there is scarcity of water during the summer the um, earthworm kind of uh, worms they uh, like you know you can see here how it has folded itself around why because it will help the moisture to set inside the body itself now what is this this is a group of snails who is in the estivation animals that fly so which are the animals that fly it's most of the birds animals that can fly are called aerial animals most birds can fly birds have hollow bones that make their bodies light in weight and help them to fly isn't it now look at this structure of bones they are hollow so what is the use of this what is the main use of bone bone gives you the structure the stability to your body and also the tightness now if the birds bones are hollow their bodies will be light in weight and hence the birds can carry themselves to heights and easily they can fly now you you can see here the birds have four limbs modified as wings now have a look over here in this image you can see this bird it has feather covered by body its four limbs are modified to wings it it's having hollow bones and it's spindle shaped body they have feathers to keep them warm 
and feathers also help them to retain their moisture birds have a special body shape narrow in the front and back and broad in the middle one can see here their body is narrow in the front part as well as at the back part but in the middle it is somewhat broad this body type helps them to cut through air and fly easily such body shape is called streamlined shape most insects have wings to fly now you can see here this is kind of insect and most of the insects do have the wings animals that live in water what do we call them yeah animals like fish octopuses and dolphins that live in water are called as aquatic animals most aquatic animals have fins or specialized limbs that help them swim turtles seals and dolphins have or like flippers to swim in the water so one can see here in this image this kind of fins uh, like they are or like flippers so they will help them to swim in the water okay aquatic animals may breathe air or extract oxygen that is dissolved in water through specialized organs called gills or directly through the skin so what do they do they may breathe air or extract oxygen that is dissolved in the water you might have seen some fish or videos of fish who come outside the sea water just to take some air <clears throat> whales and dolphins are mammals and breathe air into their lungs just like we do they cannot breathe underwater like fish can as they do not have gills they breathe through nostrils called blow hole located right on top of their heads so one can see here this is a picture of a mammal that is dolphin and it has a blow hole right above its head so our nose is below the eyes and its nose is above the head animals that can live both on land and in water are called amphibians okay so we have seen different kind of animals uh, till now terrestrial arboreal aerial aquatic and now it's a term of term of amphibians so you can see here frogs and toads they are so not this animal is not called as frog they are different from the frogs so frogs and toads frogs and toads are examples of amphibians these animals have stronger hind limbs than fore limbs to hop and jump on land hind limbs means their back limbs are stronger why because they need to hop and jump they can even jump from tree to tree from rock to rock can you tell other uh, names of uh, amphibians correct the turtles they are also amphibians they also have webbed feet to swim in water so one can see here this is a uh, feet of one of the amphibian you can see here there is a web skin it's just like skin so it will help them to swim in water amphibians breathe through gills when in water and have lungs to breathe while on land so they can survive both like on land and in water also animals that live on sea shore what is it it is called as sea cucumbers no they are not meant for eating and these are sea worms one can see it looks uh, like some kind of worm right but it is particularly the sea worm what's the special thing it has so many legs animals such as 
sea worms and sea cucumbers live on the seashore they have to survive frequent water waves some animals burrow in sand to escape water waves and tides now uh, you must have been to the seashore and you can see how forcefully the tides hit the seashore now not every time you you are able to like you know uh, survive this so what they do they hide themselves in the burrows animals that live on seashores what is other animal the starfish the starfish are equipped with hundred tiny little feet at the end of each arm now one must have seen that this five uh, things okay why a starfish is a starfish because it has multiple arms okay so a starfish basically may have five six arms so what happens at the end of every arm and feet they have hundred sorry at the end of every arm they have hundreds of tiny little feet to move they fill these feet with sea water causing the arm to move like foot so a move uh, will a feet will move around right so to enable it to move like a feet what they do they fill these feet with sea water so this feet will start moving this mechanism allows the starfish to move many crabs make holes and burrows as protective tunnels during high tides so this is also a common structure one can find on the seashore master builders some animals build their own homes can you name some uh, any such animals spiders spin their webs to catch their prey spider web is useful in many ways have you seen spider web yes they are all around us even in our homes one can easily find a spider web spider silk has antiseptic qualities yes so if you are stuck somewhere in some old place or something and somebody gets a wound you can simply apply a spider silk it's really helpful it can be used to stop bleeding and can be used for healing cuts and wounds not on major cuts but yeah if there is like you know small cut and if it is bleeding and you don't uh, have anything antiseptic around you then you can definitely use a spider silk they are also used to make fishing nets so how uh, using the spider silk they have also been used as fibers in telescopes so one can see the spider silk is used inside the telescope potter wasp collect wet clay to build a nest that can be used after it has dried in the heat of the sun now you you must have seen this kind of structures uh, in your house windows also right they bring the wet clay and they start building this kind of structures they also lay eggs inside this nest made from mud do not rot they stay long after the young ones have hatched birds build nest mostly to lay and hatch eggs and raise young ones have you seen any birds nest so what this nest do they keep the young chicks warm and safe now one can see here a weaver bird's nest this is a tailor bird's nest with its chick and one can see here woodpecker's nest they find a wood or a tree and they start digging a hole inside that wood and they will lay their eggs over there a bird uses things like leaves straws twigs pieces of thread and cotton to make nests 
birds like cuckoos and cowbirds lay eggs in another bird's nest they also rely on others to raise their young ones now one interesting fact i'll tell you about the cuckoo birds as soon as they are uh, outside the egg they will start kicking the other eggs out why because of the competition so that the other eggs will not hatch and there will be less competition for the food so let's wrap this up homes of animals what are the homes of animals so they are terrestrial animals so examples are monkey panda bear like the koala bear so most of the arboreal animals are also called as terrestrial animals the second type is aerial animal so examples are most of the birds birds bats and insects the third type is aquatic animals examples are octopus duck dolphin most of the fish and the last type is amphibians examples are frogs and toads okay let's start now with the exercises choose the correct option animals that live mostly on trees are called the animals which live mostly on trees are called first option terrestrial animal arboreal animal aerial animal or amphibian what's the correct answer it's arboreal animal which of the following is or are nocturnal animals any guesses giraffe owl deer eagle which is the one yes owl now next is which of the following animals live in den so the options are sparrow lion snake or snail so the option is lion let's go for the next question which of the following animals hibernate bear crocodile lung fish none of this so the correct answer is bear which of the following animals can live both on land and in water toad frog both a and b and none of this so what's the correct answer it's both a and b now we have to match these uh, options now here they have given us aerial animals uh, estivation terrestrial animal and hibernation the uh, matches are koala bear common poor whale bird or frog so you can see here this is a koala bear and what is common poor whale this is nocturnal bird it looks like this so what are the aerial animals they are the birds what is estivation who does the estivation it's been done by frogs uh, what's estivation it is summer sleep also right what are terrestrial animals it's koala bear and what's hibernation hibernation will be done by the common poor whale it is just this kind of animal so we have to write true or false in ancient times spider's webs were used to heal cuts and wounds is it true or false yeah it's true starfish make protective tunnel to save them during tides is it true or false it is also true amphibians have stronger hind limbs than fore limbs that is true or false it is also true what are amphibians the animals that can live inside the water as well as on the land nocturnal animals have a poor vision at night no that's not possible nocturnal animals have better vision actually so the statement is false arboreal animals have sharp claws is it true or false that's true answer the following questions what are nocturnal animals so what are the nocturnal animals and what special features do they have so the answer is 
animals such as bats owls that are active only at night are called as nocturnal animals they have better vision and hearing to enable them to hunt for their prey at the night now we have to uh, differentiate between estivation and hibernation so we know that estivation is nothing but the summer sleep and hibernation is the winter sleep so let's see the differences one by one the rest and slowing down of activities during hot summer months is called as estivation or summer sleep the inactivity of animals during the winter months is commonly called as hibernation or winter sleep snails frogs bees and earthworms settle down to a long sleep during hot summer months animals such as polar bear and woodchuck become inactive during the winter season now next uh, difference we have to tell about aerial animals and arboreal animals animals that can fly are called as aerial animals land animals that live mostly on trees are called as arboreal animals what's the speciality of aerial animals they have hollow bones and a body shape called as streamlined Arboreal animals have long forelimbs and sharp claws. So the examples of aerial animals are most of the birds and examples of arboreal animals are monkey, squirrel, koala bear and lizard. Now the, we have to answer these questions how do animals survive in different environmental conditions so we have to give examples here so the answer is animals survive in different environmental conditions by either the process of estivation or hibernation so the example is when there is scarcity of food during the winter months animals like polar bear undergo hibernation During the hot summer insects like bees snails undergo estivation so this is how they survive themselves give an example of a master builder animal explain briefly so the answer is some animals build their own homes so the example will be potter wasp collect webbed clay to build a nest that can be used after it has dried in the heat of the sun nests made from mud do not rot they stay long after the young ones have hatched let's go for the next question what are amphibians So the answer will be animals that can live both on land and in water are called as amphibians. Amphibians breathe through gills when in water and have lungs to breathe while on land. Examples of amphibians are frogs and toads. Next question is how do animals on the seashore survive? So the answer is animals on the seashore have to survive frequent water waves hence some animals burrow in sand to escape water waves and tides examples of seashore animals are sea worms and sea cucumbers and can you give more example yeah the starfish also let's move towards next question what is habitat list and explain the different categories of habitats so the answer is a place where an animal lives is called its habitat so terrestrial animals uh, are the first category animals that live on land are called terrestrial animals 
arboreal animals animals such as monkeys squirrel and lizards that live mostly on trees are called arboreal animals aquatic animals animals such as fish dolphins live water so they are called as aquatic animals aerial animals animals such as birds that can fly are called as aerial animals so this is how we have completed this chapter if you have uh, liked it please do like share and subscribe to study strikers thank you so much see you in the next video